Well, then, hello and welcome to today's um, presentation by Grundfos und Laudert. My name is uh, Thomas Heuchert and together with my colleague Michael Giesen of Laudert Company, we will present this lecture together and, of course, how we approach this project. And from two views, from the customer view, from us, uh, the Grundfos Company, and uh, from the implementation partner's view, the Laudert view. Let's start with a uh, brief uh, introduction to our companies. Uh, Grundfos. Grundfos is a Danish pump manufacturer and was established in 1945 in Beringbo by a certain Mr. Paul Jensen. We have over 20,000 employees worldwide and over at over 100 different sites. Last year, our annual production was 16 million pumps. And this means that we are um, the world market leader in pump production. Our main products are circulation, submersible, and positive displacement pumps. But we could actually present an own lecture on this. Um, uh, on me personally, my name is Thomas Heuchert. I am 31 years old and for roughly 12 years, I've been working for the Grundfos company in various positions. At present, I work in the uh, um, product experience management team and uh, am located at the Danish headquarter. On my current jobs, um, this is uh, data distribution and the implementation of intelligent platforms. And this brings me to today's topic. And that is the generation and publication of uh, uh, price lists with print suite. Yeah, I will uh, continue from the service provider's perspective. My name is Michael Giesen. I represent the Laudert company. Laudert uh, has been around since 1959. We have a classical print background. Then over decades, we developed into one of the leading service providers for media and uh, are active in various fields in media production, media IT. We have large studios specialized in e-commerce photography. Uh, the area of print services, uh, this used to be digital printing in the past. Today, we actually um, uh, um, broker, uh, act as brokers for print services. And this is um, um, actually rounded off by our creative department, uh, Loft. And uh, we also have consulting services. My name is Michael Giesen. I'm 45 years old, have three kids. And I am the uh, department head uh, at Laudat. And uh, I focus on pin and dumb systems and dynamic publishing. Uh, just a few words on the status quo. Um, as long as we've, we've partnered with um, uh, Werk 2, we've worked with Grundfos. Grundfos was my first print suite project in actual fact and a complex uh, project even back then. And um, back then uh, we still had uh, the hybrid system, the SAP Commerce Cloud replaced it now with a classical print uh, Comet uh, application. And uh, this is uh, why we looked after the print uh, production for the DACH region involving a lot of manual work. But back then, uh, we already drew up uh, pretty complex tables. Over time, we uh, actually had uh, the uh, demand from Grundfos France to establish a central system to replace uh, SAP um, uh, Commerce, uh, and that was Akineo um, as a real PIM system. And an alternative delivery uh, technology was used, but we were still on board for the template design and media design. But again, this solution was not flexible enough for the demands uh, we had with the over 60 price lists at Grundfos. So the templates were far too rigid for the application. Uh, the configuration of tables and templates didn't work. And this is why Grundfos uh, went looking again for a uh, befitting solution. And I'll take over here on the status quo. Thanks very much, uh, Michael. As Michael just said, 
said we were using another alternative before that which was not as uh, uh, flexible as we would have liked it to be and this is why the management said we need uh, they knocked on our door we know we need a tool that allows us to produce all of the price lists instead of uh, operating different tools in each individual country and this is why my boss said wouldn't you like to go looking for such a tool and assume responsibility for implementing such a tool in our infrastructure I said yes and this is how the project came about and the underlying idea is uh, and this is what we implemented is uh, that we provide one central master one price list that contains all of the product numbers or article numbers that we sell globally or we that we want to show in our price lists and this master is then copied and with the help of an attribute uh, catalog uh, this article number is shown in Germany or not and with this attribute the system now knows for the German price list of the 150,000 article numbers globally we only want to display 15,000 whereas the other 135,000 product items or item numbers are not to be displayed. On the Akineo or rather the PIM system we use Akineo and during our presentation I will show in detail how this was implemented, how it is uh, uh, connected and in this uh, particular case, uh, Akineo and the print suite. And one short last sentence. <laughs> um, before we uh, kicked off the project, we clearly defined the following. We want to part with printed price lists for a number of reasons. Costs, of course but also environment friendliness but the main aspects uh, was that we found over the past years that the prices were changing constantly because of raw material prices and adapting this in adapting in in, in printed price list is not possible and once they've been shipped and sent out to customers this can no longer be adapted and adaptation of texts um, impossible but I have to add unfortunately there was a handful of the 62 price lists which were printed five or six were printed but we're uh, already working on reducing this number many people ask us what does this look like now and this is what we're going to talk about this is an extract from the German price list this is the cover um, for Germany and on the right hand side this is a double page of the CR products CRE products and for this uh, project in 2023, we planned to come up with a simple, consistent price list um, for all of the countries. In France, we had more complex price lists, but we wanted to have it uh, more streamlined because the project was so big that we did not run the risk of um, entering into complication because of characteristics or characteristic curves. So what we did, um, because there was this demand for characteristic curves, we said, OK, we will create an interactive PDF for our customers, which we see here. And the data that is no longer displayed in the price list are um, located in a Grundfos product center. This is a database that uh, customers can access to download product data and characteristic curves. Now the question arises. Um, how have we uh, connected this price list with the Grundfos um, product center with product numbers? So when you click on the product number with your mouse, then the Grundfos product center opens up and then all of the information that the customer wants to see in addition to the price list are displayed. And this is language based. So if I click on the first number in the price list, then I automatically end up with the German GPC so I also see the price for the German market and if I click on the same product number in the French price list then uh, I see um, the French price. Can you click on? Exactly. Um, this brings us to the next topic, supplier selection, which was not that easy. When I accepted the project, I said, OK, I'm going to look, in, going to look for a tool that um, uh, fulfills our needs. I went to Denmark to the headquarters, sat down with my colleagues and we did some brainstorming. So we sat around the table and said, what is the aim of this project? 
uh, which requirements do we have for this tool? Do we need a standard software or a personalized software? And last but not least, the question was, do we implement the tool ourselves with our own IT or do we go for an intern external partner to support us? I returned to Germany and uh, actually analyzed the market and looked to who um, is available on the market, which tools are available on the market. And I had a choice of six different tools at that time, but quickly realized that only really two qualify for my needs. And uh, due to the cooperation uh, in the print area, Laudat uh, was uh, number one. But there was also another competitor who also offers a good tool. But we said, well, we have to look at the products available and which tool of the two tools fits our needs better. So we did an availability check. Is it already available on the market? Can we use it? Is it a proven tool? And the costs of, uh, involved uh, with uh, implementation, do they fit our budget? So we did a very standard analysis for supplier selection. Uh, we place particular emphasis on the interfaces. Uh, we, as we will see a little later, we uh, follow the best of breed approach. I learned this wording from you. Um, we um, pursue the approach that we want to use the solution that best fits our infrastructure. And if a tool changes or a new tool pops up on the market that fits our needs even better, we can simply replace it. You could uh, uh, also use a print suite um, and implement it in a PIM system via plugin. We didn't want to do that anymore. We had it before and it caused a lot of problems. And this is why we said we want to have a separate platform for delivering price lists. Then we opted in favor of the print suite and, um, and uh, we opted for the Laudit team as our implementation partner. So much for the supplier selection. After we knew we wanted to use the print suite and that it will be implemented in our infrastructure, the next uh, issue arose, create a basis. I made the first telephone calls with Michael and we uh, quickly realized what do we have to deliver as Grundfos to create price lists. I broke it down into two parts. I said, uh, what should a price list look like? This was the first thing we had to deliver to create a basis. And the second question was, um, which data need uh, to be uh, delivered for the print suite in a structured fashion to get a price list? The design, I was really happy that uh, we were already sort of experienced in producing price lists. So I could actually uh, um, help myself with the European price list. We went for the same design, for the same structure. So that was compar comparatively easy. But I suppose that uh, when you start from scratch, that this uh, will, of course, take more time and additional know-how, which was not needed in our particular case. Then the uh, data, making them available in a structured and fully automated fashion, this was a big obstacle to my mind. And this is why I brought along this uh, chart. So this is, of course, uh, our IT infrastructure in a simplified manner. Wherever you see an arrow, you, a new database or tool starts. And the order is very important. And we'll talk about this now. Let's start on the extreme left. You can see SAP. This is our ERP system, the MIS system uh, that contains product data. And the second database is called GPI. This is a database uh, um, under the Grundfos Product Center with all of the technical data. But I have to admit that the data in the GPI are not as perfect as they should be. They're not perfectly structured and at times not complete. And in a second project, uh, project uh, Products Up, we implemented a tool, and I was involved in this implementation as well. Uh, products Up is a company based in Berlin, and they produce a syndication tool. And with this syndication tool, allowed us to convert our unstructured, incomplete data into structured, incomplete data. Let's look at two 
um, examples. What happens in the products app? In SAP, for instance, we have an attribute called color. Every one of us would expect uh, red, blue, yellow, green, regular value. Unfortunately, this is not the case because we've worked with SAP for a long time. There were colleagues who thought, well, color, I simply enter engine color gray. And the next one thought, well, housing color red. So the attribute is used for various technical characteristics. Products app offers a solution um, to uh, sort this out. So we have one attribute which is the engine color and the other attribute is called uh, uh, housing color and the product sub actually sorted, sorts this out. So if the attribute uh, red um, is uh, used for the engine color then uh, this uh, is uh, cl uh, cleansed automatically with the next run through. So let's look at mechanical seals, for instance, which is of uh, really c uh, characteristic parts. You might think that you have one attribute for the mechanical seals. No, not true. In our case, we had up to 20 different attributes in our system. Uh, so this is the mechanical seal for the circulation pump, for the submersible pump, or for the positive displacement pump. So you have to combine them in one attribute so that you only have one attribute uh, called Called mechanical seal and it contains all of the data and with the help of products up we were able to achieve this. This control of the data um, helped us um, uh, to have the new pre model. We have structured data now. And the neutral model uh, via uh, API is sent to Akineo and this means from the two silos all the way down to Akineo, we have cleansed data. And this is the PIM system that we access. Here we can only see the connection to print, but we have many other tools that also access Akineo for data. And last but not least, the print suite. The uh, print suite actually accesses our um, uh, uh, structured clean data from Akineo. So when I say please produce a German prices, then the print speed only retrieves the data needed for the German prices and nothing else. This is how the connection works. So regardless of where I want to exchange a tool, this of course works because the tools communicate with each other but they're not linked. And last but not least, on the right hand side, what you get is the price list. And one point is important to mention. Um, maybe some of you wonder what happens when uh, w there is a pump in SAP that costs 100 euros and on Monday morning somebody says it's no longer 100 euros, it's 110 euros. If this happens and two minutes later I push the button in the print, print suite, please draw up a price list, then we would see 100 euros. Why? because um, we have the IT flow cycled at certain intervals and it takes some time to fully process all of the data and uh, pass uh, them on. In this particular case you would have to wait until Tuesday morning but we have an overview when this happens and then on Tuesday automatically you would see the 110 euros. You can also trigger this manually if you wanted to but uh, the, the, the interval is two days. And that was it. Thank you. Um, then uh, I will actually describe how we approach the project. Well, we had roughly nine months uh, available for the project for such a fully automated system um, with so many price lists and always with the um, optimized performance. This is a little time frame, a very small time frame. But we made it with only minor delays, uh, um, which were related to, to performance issues, but I'll talk about this a little later. Um, when I talk about the risks um, associated with the project. The project uh, was broken down into various stages. We try to break it down into small stages, not totally agile, but um, we try to get the, the best of both worlds so that um, we can actually use the learnings from the first stage uh, for the second stage and so on. The big benefit uh, with the BDF variants is that uh, there was not a printer's deadline uh, but you actually had iteration stages and uh, we were very variable and this is what we really leveraged. 
and uh, connected to the staged model, the time planning, constant adaptation of the time uh, plan and complete transparency with the customer. And for the individual stages, we drew up uh, uh, specific concepts, uh, detailed concepts, to show um, two years ago, uh, I showed how we do this. We cooperate with our teams in Vietnam, both for customers and for our developers. We actually create the right basis to be able to implement these things. In the beginning, we did a proof of concept. How does uh, this work, the connection to Akin? We know this from other scenarios where we work with exports and imports. In this particular case, it's a live um, um, a rest connection with Akineo. And those who've done print projects will know that uh, the rest uh, connection is not so highly performant. And in so far, it was worth a, a proof of concept. But with the test c conditions, it was successful. We actually delivered the first temp template from the Akaneo system. And then via the uh, print planner platform, we established the processes and so that the customer, in this particular case, Thomas, was able to work with the system at a very early stage. And this is the buzzword. Um, we have this uh, driving uh, instructors model in the PIM context. We try to bring the customer on board as soon as possible. And this was also one of your demands uh, that you wanted to operate the system completely, not involving any media production. Uh, um, you simply wanted to see the price list generated at the end, drop out, so to speak. This was one of your premise. And this worked out in the project. You were um, able to completely import and trigger the price list at a very early stage of the project and actually create such a high diversity of price lists. Of course, we also came up against challenges and risks. Uh, the timing I mentioned before, because uh, the uh, time available was very uh, uh, short than performance from past projects. Uh, we remembered where we actually produced two or three catalogs simultaneously, we or the customer. Here, it was completely different um, to actually, uh, actually get the data live from Akineo and uh, to produce uh, uh, the catalogs live, so to speak, using the InDesign server. So we created the infrastructural basis. Um, we actually have over 20 InDesign instances and we can go up even further because there are more demands coming from the countries, more languages, even higher variety of price lists. And uh, we've done constant um, uh, optimization, continuous improvement. So the insights from the first stages were passed on to the second stages. And when I talk about the key features, I will actually talk about these optimizations. Then, of course, the degree of automation played uh, or plays a decisive role. In the past, uh, prices uh, we still had a lot of media work involved, especially for multilingual tables. The pagination um, is always a critical thing. But here, we were able to put it in your hands through configurable tables and templates. And, uh, and it's fully automatic, the system now. The risks and challenges on the customer side were, of course, the resources. You had three people in the team. So two people who actually produced the publications, who controlled the whole process with the countries, and one colleague who maintained the data um, with 60 different languages. This is quite a task. This was a risk in the beginning, but uh, this little team managed it uh, and everything uh, simultaneously. So let me pay my respects again and uh, enabling customers. We were uh, not clear whether it would be possible without media production 100%. Of course, we've acquired some experience from previous projects and therefore know about the key issues. 
but the basic layout had changed other team uh, other layout no more pressure only pdfs to be created so that the critical issues with product management were no longer there because in the past we had this silo thinking which no longer exists. So um, uh, higher preparedness to strike a compromise. And this is why the fully automatic version was possible and that we also could fully enable the customer um, in, in this particular case Thomas and his team so what are the key features um, in the project of course apart from the high scalability that I don't want to cover again it is the extensive use of table configurators and table presets and the uh, master duplication uh, scheme and uh, let me show you a brief example. So this is uh, one page of the price list by way of example. In the upper area we've got the configurable template. In the previous system this was very static. We had many different templates uh, used. Here the template is completely configurable. So uh, which elements are displayed, which aren't. Uh, which uh, d uh, elements depend on each other. This is controlled by the configuration 100%. And in the bottom area of the table, we use the table configurator by VAC2. This is a uh, um, component that is available in the print planner and will also be um, available in the new system, which is based on metadata. So um, there is a certain basis that you create. Um, this is up to you um, how you want to design it as a customer. And we use it in the way that uh, there are certain characteristics for the tables, the type of table that uh, you want to be displayed. And for the individual attributes, we've got individual attributes that you can maintain. This is orientation summary of tables. Mm, certain uh, attributes are being prioritized uh, or certain clusters in tables and this is done by the table configurator based on the metadata and the same configuration is also used for the upper part of the templates. To show you an example I don't know whether one, uh, uh, whether you have used the table configurator. This is a print suite component basically and uh, it is anchored in the print planner right now and uh, the configurator can be used for the data sets be it products in most cases it is products and um, the linked articles or the connected articles uh, allow us to configure the tables then the print view component in the middle area and on the right hand side we've got the meta uh, data configuration unfortunately you can't see it from the back rows too well but the individual attributes uh, can be configured individually and you could say the color that I see here uh, is available in three clusters. I now want to cross them in the table. You adapt and you do a preview and it usually fits. This is what the customer wants to have. Um, customers want to check the structural delivery. They don't want to create an InDesign. They simply want to check the structure of the table. And this can be done through the configuration. Connected to this, uh, th uh, we actually created so-called table presets because not for each uh, product you want to do the configuration each time. Thomas uh, gave us an Excel sheet and it contains uh, the um, table configuration and also um, and these are then manually assigned to the products or they can also be assigned in an automatic way through SAP groups for instance. So you actually do the job once the, in PIM for instance in a classification system where you actually create presets for classifications and then you can select these presets. Originally in the early stages uh, for the individual nodes so we also save the metadata information but uh, the more uh, the project uh, 
got going, the more data we had, the more lists were produced. We said, okay, this metadata configuration um, will produce millions of data sets. And this, of course, also impacts the performance and the stability of the system. And this is why we optimized uh, from scratch and uh, opted for the presets. And the presets are taken from the um, uh, uh, saving mechanism. So the presets uh, are really a streamlined system. And this impacted the, um, this, the performance. Question? The templates? Um, Yes, exactly. A uh, question. It's InDesign based, the templates. Um, uh, we generate this, these through the InDesign server, but the, with the InDesign client, we can round it off, but we don't want to do this. Why? Why don't you want to do that? Why? Why do you accept this bottleneck? Well, um, initially we we asked ourselves, we wanted to leave this option uh, of editing because in the beginning we were not 100% sure uh, because of the versions we had, whether we could do without uh, media production work. And this is why we went for the server solution, but scaled it up and uh, actually got uh, very good results. Well then. Then, oh, okay, A success stories. This is my slide. Let's talk about the successes. I will start with a partial success. It was a partial uh, success of this project, and this is the development of the Grundfos neutral models. So turning unstructured into structured data and to really control the data with pro products up. I think that uh, corporate data are the new gold. This is my view. If you don't control your data, you'll find it difficult to implement such a project. One a little success story. In my previous uh, position, I always had to export uh, from SAP manual and the exports always looked like patchwork. Uh, so I always had to manually edit them. And once I had exported the data, then uh, one year later at the same request and I had to do it again. This was very annoying. So when we were done with the products up project, I uh, uh, exported a spreadsheet and then you get a huge spreadsheet without any gaps or holes and you always have the column width and when you scroll up and down, um, it is really impressive to see. And uh, it's about the implementation of the print suite and the use of the print suite. This, is, this was the main success of it all, that the print suite uh, has now been implemented in our infrastructure, that we can use it. And for the first time ever in the history of Grundfos, we're now only using one tool for producing global price lists. Um, before, um, Germany used one tool, France used one tool, everybody had another know-how, and it also cost um, several times the license costs. So this is a big success. And another anecdote, how do I draw up the price lists? Well, on Friday, before I go home, I actually start the workflow for price list production, um, uh, go to my weekend, do nothing uh, apart from relaxing, I return on a Monday, switch on my computer, and in the file I find 62 price lists. I think this is quite a nice success. And last but not least, talking about uh, successes, um, the flexibility and the independence we now enjoy. We can operate our tool now. We know exactly what's happening. We have access to all of the servers through numerous lauded trainings. We know exactly what to do when something goes wrong. Of course, you have to love IT, but uh, the, the team is has this affinity. And this is why we can solve many, many issues ourselves. And uh, furthermore, a little an anecdote, this preset configuration, just to show the effect, I can now enter the spreadsheet and say for preset alpha, for instance, this is one of our main products. I know uh, I want to show a new attribute for the prices 24, 20, uh, 2024. I would have to send an email to all countries. Please uh, include this attribute in your price list. What happens? 
some people don't read the mail, 50 don't do it, 50% don't do it. And here with the next rendering, it is contained in all 62 prices. And this is a big success for us. And this uh, brings us to the last slide. And this is the Outlook slide. Um, it all sounds perfect, uh, of course, because it is a, a presentation on this project. But of course, we had to overcome obstacles in this project. There were some points uh, for time reasons. We could not opt for plan A. We had to opt for plan B. And the aim for this year is to eliminate this plan B and um, to really um, finalize plan A and we're busy doing this now and towards the end of the year uh, we hope to have the complete system. You will have noticed uh, that uh, I love a high degree of automation. I strongly dislike uh, repetitive manual jobs. I dislike it. Uh, it's boring. And this is why this year we're also working on an improvement of the automation degree with the help of scripts and tools by Laudat. And the last point under Outlook, we currently have 62 price lists that we render or that we rendered in 23. And uh, this has uh, also given us uh, um, uh, opportunities. Even countries that have not had the service uh, have knocked on the door. Now we would like to have the same price list. I think 12 countries asked us who not uh, uh, served yet. And we hope that we will be able to onboard them as well. And uh, I didn't even think of it, but from Germany and Italy, we got this demand. If uh, you create this in an automated fashion, why not translate it into English? Render me an English price list for our customers. And this is also an outlook. We want to extend this and uh, we expect uh, 80 to 100 price lists rendered in 24. That was it. questions. Um, the, the prices didn't look the same before. In some countries, we even sent out spreadsheets. Uh, I'm not joking. This even happened the last few years. We sent the spreadsheets to customers and they scrolled up and down. Um, the design and the structure is based on the European price list. So they were further advanced than other countries. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, to conclude, uh, this will to automate 100% has really created a basis that gives us completely different opportunities for the future in terms of personalization, for instance. Even customer-specific price lists can be made. We have created the basis now, and you don't find this with all of the projects, uh, I have to admit. The last uh, graphical refinements uh, decide here. But this is not wishful thinking for the future. Instead, it shows that we've really created at the right basis. And what about uh, decorative pages? Will decorative pages be back? Yes. So there's a specific demand from a wonderful country called France because the French really use the prices in, com in a slightly different way. They use it as a um, uh, tool for um, um, distribution purposes, especially for, for pumps. Um, and this is why we said we won't include any characteristic curves in the 23 price this but we will implement it in early May I will uh, drive to the headquarter again and we will sit around the table and then find the highest priority of demands and then implement it do you use different images in the countries or is it the same standard images we use the same standard images at Akineo, and this is where I get uh, the image from. It's the parent entity. This is the text above the tables. We deliberately opted for the same images. In the former price list, uh, everybody wanted to show a different image. But this is only mapping the product that you want to sell. And this is why we said we don't want to do this any longer. So when you extrapolate this, uh, you're showing 100 images multiplied by 62 price lists. Then the data um, uh, volume is even bigger. And uh, this is why we have a global feed in Akineo now. Comment off the mic. 
yeah, as I said, if um, there is a need in a specific country, we're free. We can also provide the InDesign file and then you have to change it manually. We're not showing wrong images. It was selected by a global product manager. And if the Spaniard says, I want a different image, fine. It's up to them. Yes, please. The lady at the back. How long was the iteration um, communication with all of the countries? Well, it was a little rough the first year. We created a network. The network is made up of our uh, team, the product dealer. This is the product owner. This is me. Then we have a project manager. And um, on the global level, our products are broken down into four segments. This is why per segment we have a global NK that we selected and um, he controlled everything. And then we broken it down to the local countries and we have a big network of contact persons, but um, th there's little effort involved. They have to do the proofreading, have to just make sure whether this is okay. So this uh, still needs to be done by the, the local uh, persons. Well, then we're done. Uh, if there are any other questions, we uh, will be around uh, for the rest of the event. You have to leave today, but uh, I'm around. Uh, so we can stop here. Thank you very much.